Hi, I'm Nico. This video is a little bit different than the other ones on my channel. This one is actually taken from a 7 hours video course on building templates, writing for strings and mixing strings tracks. If you are interested in the whole course, visit digitalcomposing.com and check it out. Still, I thought that everyone would benefit from this video. So, here we go. Okay, so far we've been covering a lot of ground since we started. We've added our libraries, we took care of the routing of the instruments to the, to the correct buses, we've been balancing our templates, and that means the, the output volume of the instruments, but also the, the, the pre-gain to have, uh, to have a correct input volume. We've been matching our libraries together because they were not recorded in the same space. And to do that, we've used a convolu uh, convolution reverb, so we've used EQs. We've also aligned the, the libraries to, uh, together. I've shown you how to to do this visually. So for, for example, here on CSS, we have a, a track delay of minus 60, and this corresponds to the chamber strings track delay here. And while we were at it, we've also created expression maps so that we can switch between articulations during our track. Then, We've also created our sketching area. We sketched the track using piano and then we orchestrated that on the strings. So far, our track is more or less complete, but it is still a bit stiff because some of these parts were just copy pasted, some of the parts were uh, created using step input rather than playing on the keyboard. And just before we look at creating a mixing template and mixing this track, I think that we need to humanize it a bit. We need to make it breathe a, a, a little and to, to remove some of this uh, static feeling, right? We, we want really to make it a bit more human. So what I propose is that we listen to this track uh, one more time in its entirety to, to see where we are and then we will start the polishing. Uh, uh, I will show you stuff about event starts and tempo tweaks and how to humanize the quantization and the CCs and all that. So first, let's check where we are at this moment. Our three acts, intro, act two, act three, so the climax and a bit of uh, outro. So yeah, let's listen to this.
Okay, so that's where we are at the moment. First thing that I want to do to make sure that when I export my stems that will go in our mixing template, I want to make sure that, that the beginning of each event won't be truncated. And sometimes this happens, uh, especially on short notes, uh, that the the first note of an event of an event will be cut off. And why is that? Is look, for example, we have this uh, violas pizzicato track, and we have a track delay of minus sixty here. So if I take my event and I start here, uh, Cubase, when playing this track, will not be able to to compute the the minus sixty uh, delay. So what I like to do is to take all of my events and just to add, you see, just a bit of. Uh, empty space before. So, so this way, I'm sure that nothing will be truncated. There is something else for uh, long notes. If you remember, if we go at the beginning of our template, we created uh, starting events here. And these starting events, they, they contain the, the starting value for, for our different for our different CCs. So for example, we have one for vibrato, we have one for modulation, which is CC1, is this one, and one for expression. And the, the default value for all the libraries that we use in this template has a CC1 value of 80 and uh, an expression of 127. And the uh, vibrato is different for, for each library. Anyway, if I start playing here, for example, let's look at this long sustained note. As you can see, when the note start playing, we start with a modulation of, uh, what is it, of roughly three, and then we, we grow. And same for the expression, we, we start here at about 30. The problem that we can potentially have is that because just before the start of this note, the CC1 value is at 80 and the expression is at 127, is that we would have a, a bump here at the beginning of the note because the initial value is 80 and is not 4. So again, what I like to do is extend the event a little bit and to set the starting CC value at the beginning of the event. And this will ensure that we have a smooth attack uh, on, on the note. So let me just solo this and you will see that it, it's absolutely fluid and there is no bump. See, re really nice. It's just building into it. And this I do for all of the events for the track. So for the short notes, I just extend them a bit. And for the long notes, if we take these basses here, they are playing tremolo, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, yeah, I extend the, the event a little at the beginning and just add, you know, one, two values uh, to, to reach the the value that I want to have at the start of the note and that's it for these. Then one thing that we can do to help humanize the the performance, uh, as you know, in our template we've created a tempo track and this tempo track allows us to to change the the, the tempo uh, as the track is playing so for example here during the introduction if you look here at the bottom we are at a tempo of 105 bpm but as soon as we move into the the build up of the track we are at a tempo of 120 bpm which is faster and that's that but Let's take the intro, 
for example, let me just put a cycle marker uh, around it. The whole of the intro part will be played at 105 BPM. And, you know, this is a bit static. I think that we could emphasize, uh, emphasize some notes. And this is something I've I've already done here, for example, you can see that on this particular part of the melody, for this note, if I place myself here, we drop the tempo to 98, just for the ending of this note, and then we go back to 125. So li listen the the effect that this gives. We, we just have this note lasting a little bit longer. It's very subtle, right? But it helps humanize the stuff. So le let me do it somewhere else as well. Here, uh, I, I want to, to drag the, the, this note a little bit longer. So for example, I could put uh, um, uh, uh, a marker here and drop the tempo. We are at 125. Let's say that we want to drop it at 95 here. And as soon as we finish with this note right there on the legato transition, we move back to 125. And just let's just see if this helps the, the flow of the track. Okay, maybe it's a bit uh, uh, aggressive here, 95. You, you have to experiment with that, you know. So let's try 99. This is just, you, you go on a feeling, right? The, there are no rules. The, the, there is no algorithm that will tell you how much you need to drop the, the, the tempo and where to, to drop it. This is nice. And that you can do for the whole of your piece and it, it will help humanize this. Another thing that we can do is humanize the quantization. Uh, I know that a lot of people will tell you that you have to play in each track. So for example, this uh, pizzicato uh, cellos, uh, people will tell you, oh, if you want to humanize it, if you want it to sound good, you absolutely need to learn how to play the keyboard and you need to play that in. You cannot click the note in, so you step input or draw them in. And, you know, to me, it's a bit of a crappy and elitist thing to say. It's not because you cannot play the keyboard that you cannot write music. Uh, you are not trying to be a performer, you are trying to be a composer. Right. If you know how to play the piano, for sure, uh, you will be faster at composing. But if you don't know how to play the piano, this should not prevent you to try to write music, right? Everybody is allowed to write music. So don't don't get too bothered what, uh, by what uh, elitist people could say. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I've got several placements as a, as a media composer, and the fact that I use step input never bothered anyone one bit. Uh, the, your final audience, your clients, the they don't care the way that you are composing your music. What they care is the final product. Does it sound good? And to make it a bit more human, to make it sound it a little bit better, let me open these here. You see that each note is really, uh, these are triplets. So let me use the, 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 the grid as triplets. If I look at this now, they are not completely quantized because 
I've done that already. So let's try this violins because I really want to prove my point here. Yeah, look here, the quantization, it's, it's really mechanic, right? Every note is falling straight on the grid and that we can tweak a little. And a good way to do this is to check in your DAW. I'm using Cubase here, but uh, I know that Logic, Reaper, Studio One, all those, those, they, they can do that. I think Studio One does it even better because you have a, fu a humanized function. Is I can open my quantize panel and here you, you, you see this uh, thing called a tick. I can add some randomization to it. So what I have is that I have one randomization for the, for the straight notes and I have one for the triplets by, and I like to randomize by 12 ticks. So what I usually do is that I will select all of the notes except the first one and the last one because I want the first note to fall exactly on the beat because then it will be easier to to cut and it makes it also easier in the life of a video editor so uh, as soon as you give them a sync point everything is started is starting on the same beat and same for the last note but for these we can add a bit of randomness to it. So I've selected these notes. Here I've selected my uh, quantization with a bit of randomness in it, uh, 12 ticks, and now I will press Q on my keyboard, which is my shortcut to, to randomize notes. And as you will see, I will try to zoom in, you will see that the notes will move, but just a little. So I'm doing this now. See, now for, for example, this one is not falling exactly on the beat. It's a bit before. And this one is falling just a little bit after the, after the beat. Le let's try to, you know what? I will undo the change. So it falls on the beat. There we go. And I will play just this part. I will solo this. We will listen. To it, you will see it sounds mechanical. Okay, and now I'm going to apply this randomization again. So look, I press Q. Now the notes moved a little bit and you, and you will see it already sounds more human. Again, it's subtle, but when all the sections are playing together, it gives a bit more of this human feel. And now let me play this with the click enabled. So we, we, we have a bit more groove here. We have a, a, a bit more of a human touch and this is important. Also, while composing, uh, I said that the accents would be on a velocity of 62 and all the other notes would be on a velocity of 40. Three. And if you look here at the bottom at the velocities, this looks like what a machine would do, not what a human would do. So this you can also humanize a little bit. So typically what I would do is, for example, select this notes and the same as I did with the, with the quantization here. Uh, I, I have a, a macro for, for the velocities. I will press it now and you see now it went all over the place. So I will just take them a little bit down. So the accent are still louder uh, than the, than the non accent and listen.
So again, by changing the, 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 the velocity, we, we introduce a bit of randomness in the playing and how strong you, you want this randomness to be is totally up to you. This, uh, I, I'm just quickly showing you how I would do that. Next, to humanize our track. As you know, some of these CC curves, let's take this one, for example, on the, on the cellos. Here, le let's listen to that. I wanted to have these waves and, uh, and it's really cool. But again, look at it. It's, uh, it's very mechanical because we use the curve tool to, to draw the, the CC in for this particular part. So there are two ways to go about that. You can record your mod wheel, uh, playing over it. So this way you really do it the human way and you don't need to be an excellent uh, keyboard player to do that, just play the line and move your mod wheel and then uh, merge the, the, the output of your mod wheel with, with that. So you can really play the, the modulation in and you can do the same for the, for the vibrator and for the, for the expression or something else that you can do. And sometimes uh, I, I, I do this as well is here. I will remove the quantization. I will take my pencil tool and I will draw it in. And for, for drawing with the mouse, I'm really not good. So my lack of drawing skills is actually a plus here because it will add some humanization to my, to my playing. So let's see how this sounds now. So you see here the curve, for example, is a bit steeper and uh, here it just listen, it's, it speaks for itself actually. Okay. And this you can do for every track. You can, you can even do it for the, for the layers. So the layer of this, uh, cellos of the CSS cellos are here with the chamber strings cello. So you can, instead of copy pasting this one to this one, you could go into your layer and draw it as well. So you, you, you would really introduce some more humanization. And okay, this, this can be time consuming. It, it, it depends on the, on the deadline that you have, the time that you have at your, at your disposal to, to, to do these little tricks. To, to, to be quite honest, uh, uh, I don't do it all the time. Uh, it, it depends on the, it, it completely depends on the project that I'm working on and what I'm trying to achieve. But if you want really to add this humanization to it, I would advise to, to introduce a bit of, uh, of randomness and uh, a human touch to your track. And the last thing I want to show you, let me find a part where this would be applicable. Um, here, here would be a, a good thing. Look, we, we, we have, um, a really quiet part here. And then we have from here to here, we have a small ramp up that move into the climax. So let's just listen to this part. See the volume transition between the ramp up and, uh, and the climax, uh, climax part is a bit abrupt. There it's quiet and then boom, it goes loud. So what I could do as well to 
is I could take my velocities. Where are they? There, I've done it already. But you could create these little ramps here. So, for example, you select your your notes, and you see you, you can create a, a little bit of a, of a ramp up. And these are really the the final touch that uh, that I do at the at the end, ju just before mixing. For, for example, here we we really have the the last part of the climax. <laughs> And it's all played at the at the same velocity. So here as well, I, I could just take this and it's bring it a little bit stronger just for this last uh, for, for this last bar, right? So let's do this. And if I just play this too. And there, the, the volume is increasing just a little bit. It's subtle. But if you do that on all the tracks, the, the, the volume change and the, the ramp up will be more prominent. And with that said, uh, I will let you humanize your track the, the, the way you want to humanize it. If you've not been working on the track, uh, on your own track while following along, uh, along uh, the, this course, you can, of course, download the, the MIDI project and try to humanize it the, the way you want to. If you are working on Cubase, you can also download the, the, the Cubase project and once you are done in the next video we will start looking at building a mixing template for our for our strings uh, composition template so see you in the next lesson and keep practicing <laughs>